Hi, I'm Colin, and today we're going to be talking about some very important geo products that you can utilize in Hardscape. There is a wide variety of geo products out there, ranging from a woven or non woven textile to a uniaxial or biaxial grid. Regardless of which product you utilize for your Hardscape project, they all can provide strength and longevity to your system. One product we see pretty often is a filter fabric. While this may look like your traditional landscape fabric or weed barrier, um, it's actually an engineered polypropylene non-woven material to be utilized underneath your paving stones or behind a retaining wall. Its main function is to keep dirt from migrating into your gravel because dirt in your gravel can promote settling and especially behind a retaining wall, it can change your surcharge load and promote failure. Um, it doesn't have quite the same tensile strength as a geotextile, a woven kind, so if you don't need that tensile strength and you need permeability, which this provides, then this is the product for you. The most common fabric we see today is actually this. It's a woven geotextile. Its main function is just like the filter fabric, is to keep dirt from migrating up into your gravel and promoting settling. The trade-off between GeoFilter and this is it has such high tensile strength and it's so tightly woven that it has no permeability. But that is a benefit in a pavement system like paving stones, asphalt, or concrete um, to where it has enough tensile strength to create some bridgeability in any settling or voids that can be created over time. So we've constructed this little demonstration table to show you the benefits of utilizing a woven geotextile fabric underneath the base construction of your paving stone or any pavement project. We have a wooden box we have a removable drawer here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this entire box with compacted gravel and lay a course of stones over the top of it. Then we're going to remove that removable drawer to show you what would happen to the gravel base as well as the pavement on top if there were a void created below the base construction. We will then replicate that test once again, utilizing a piece of geotextile. Again, that's the woven polypropylene kind um, to show you how much tensile strength and bridgeability you get when a void is created underneath a base construction with that fabric versus without. So as you can see, after we pulled the drawer out of our little demonstration table here, the pavers in fact still did settle a little bit. Now obviously not all of our gravel base construction just fell into that void. And this isn't really the most accurate reference to how a paving stone system will work when properly installed. Nobody's gonna ever have a void this big and wide just drastically quickly happen like this. There's also some other contributing factors that would help it too, like a joint material or edge restraint, maybe the bedding material would help that too. Um, so this is the best accurate reference but it does help to know that there is enough tensile strength out of this geotextile here that if any smaller voids happen, there would be a much more bridgeability and strength there to where you can get in there and still have a functional pavement on top. If you're gonna be constructing a segmental retaining wall, you may wanna look into something like this. This is a uniaxial geogrid. The specific one is a Stratica 350, that's what we purchase and sell. And you'll notice that some of the ribbons on this grid are wider than others. And specifically on the edges here, there's even significantly wider ribs. Um, so it has lots of strength in just one direction. That's why it's a uniaxial grid. Um, if you're constructing a retaining wall, what this basically does, it goes in between your courses of block and it creates an anchor into your gravel backfill and your dirt, 
behind the retaining wall to keep it from wanting to rotate forward and failing. So if you're making a retaining wall, you may be required or at least recommended to utilize some sort of unidirectional or maybe a biaxial geogrid. So to help demonstrate the orientation of a unidirectional geogrid within a retaining wall, we have made this replica of a small Murata wall. We have our Stratagrid 350 in place. And you'll notice that there's these extra wide ribbons on the ends. We typically sell six foot wide rolls. What you don't want to do is cut two feet off that roll and just roll behind your wall. That's actually the opposite direction that you want. It is manufactured in the direction of the strength. So you're going to roll it out in four foot strips or beyond, depending on the height of your retaining wall. And you're going to cut that and lay them next to each other side by side. So you have your grid in place. You're going to have uh, your blocks with open cells and gravel locking that in place. Then you have compact gravel behind. This grid helps contribute to anchoring a very strong system. Another common geogrid that can be utilized is a biaxial geogrid. Instead of having a high tensile strength in one direction like the uniaxial geogrid, this has an even tensile strength in both directions. Because of this, it actually has a wider range of applications. It can still be utilized in the base construction of a segmental retaining wall, but it doesn't have quite the overall tensile strength as a uniaxial does. We more commonly see this in something like aggregate stabilization. Underneath your paving stones, concrete, or asphalt, it doesn't really matter. If you have a gravel base in there, you can insert this in between the layers or so, and it can help promote longevity by providing stabilization in both directions. It's also commonly used in the paving stone world for an edge restraint system if you're using a concrete product. They'll lay this underneath their bedding material towards the edges of their project. They'll cut away the bedding material, put their concrete uh, trowel edge on top, and it just helps make a bridge effect into about two feet into your border stone or so to promote longevity as well. It also is sometimes used in column construction. They can put this in between your layers of block and whatever aggregate or backfill you put inside of the column can be stabilized with this product. No matter what kind of project you have, there may be a use for a biaxial geogrid to be utilized. So we've constructed a demonstration to show you just how much some pieces of geogrid can stabilize your gravel base construction in your project. We have two boxes. One is going to be filled and compacted with three quarter inch crushed clean stone with no geogrid. The other box is always going to be filled and compacted with three quarter inch crushed clean stone. And we're going to put four separate pieces of geogrid throughout it. Um, when we release these boxes with someone standing on the gravel on top of a paver, um, you'll see the difference in how they perform by the stabilization aspect of this biaxial geogrid. So with our two boxes here, you can clearly see that the box uh, without any geogrid enforcement just completely settled and sloughed off to the floor and the side with the four layers of geogrid stays up standing still even when the person got off it. It was the same person for both demonstrations, there was no change in weight at all. Um, uh, obviously for your paving stone project, it may not be uh, completely crucial to use four layers of geogrid reinforcement. At least one layer would be good. You can see in the difference in performance just off this test, it can definitely help. Uh, with the longevity and structure of your project. At the end of the day, there is a wide variety of geoparks that you can utilize for your hardscape project. They're all inexpensive and basically a cheap insurance policy. It's a have and not need scenario versus a need and not have. Because they're inexpensive, especially when factoring the total cost of a project, they're easily attainable. We like to talk about the ones that we see utilized the most as well as the ones that we sell. If you want to learn more about hardscape projects and how to do them yourself, check out our website, westernlock.com.